In this video, we will discuss the concept of voltage. You have probably heard about something called volt. Even if you had no formal training in electronics and electrical circuits, you heard about how the batteries could be 1.5 volts or could be 9 volt if they're used in, in a device like a smoke detector. And you have probably heard people saying that, you know, the voltage has dropped, so we should change the batteries in our devices. So voltage is an idea that essentially talks about the potential of an electrical charge to move in an electrical field. Okay, so let's say we have a conducting plate, which is charged with positive charge, okay, and then we have a plate, which is let's say negatively charged. So we have a lot more electrons on the negatively charged plate than we have on the positively charged plate. And essentially what this would do is it would set up an electric field that would point like this. So we have an electric field that points from positively charged plate to negatively charged plate. What this means is that if you take a charge which is, you know, which is positively charged and you place it inside this electrical field, then this charge would have a tendency to move in this direction from a higher potential energy function to a lower potential energy function. So because of the fact that electrical potential field is pointing from left to right, or you know, I can say it's pointing from point A to point B, we can safely say that the electrical potential energy at point A is more than electrical potential energy at point B. So over here, I'm writing U as electrical potential energy. Now this is a situation which is similar to what happens when you have an object and it's placed in a gravitational field at a higher elevation and you allow it to fall. So if you have an object which is at some elevation from some reference point, in this case we could say this is the ground and the technical word for that is datum, a reference line, then if you allow it to fall under gravity that will move from a higher potential energy point to a lower potential energy point, right? We say if this is point A, this is point B, then potential energy due to gravity here is mg times h, while potential energy at point B is zero. So an object would naturally travel from higher potential energy point to a lower potential energy point. Same thing is happening with, with this you know, positively charged particle. It's, it has a tendency to go from point A to point B because that's the direction in which potential energy is decreasing. Okay, now the idea of the put voltage is related to the difference in electrical potential energy. So what is the difference in potential energy going from A to B? That's UA minus UB. And if you divide this quantity by the charge itself Q, then what we get is the difference in electrical potential. So this is difference in electrical potential. while ua minus u sub b is difference in electrical potential energy, electrical potential energy. So I'll just write PE for uh, potential energy. So if you divide difference in electrical potential energy with the charge itself, what you get is difference in electrical potential. Now, a lot of times we will talk about potential or the voltage at a certain point. So difference in electrical potential, same thing as the voltage difference. Okay, same thing as voltage difference. So in circuits, we will often talk about the voltage at a certain point. Uh, in reality, you cannot talk about voltage at a certain point unless there is a reference. Okay, so that reference would be the reference voltage at point B. And most of the time, what we'll do is we'll set a datum, which in electrical circuit is actually called ground, and we'll set the ground to be at zero voltage. So that would become our reference voltage. And then we can safely talk about the voltage at other points. So, so how can we use this? Well, if let's say you have a battery, okay? This could be rated for you know anything. It could be like a nine volt battery. And then let's say there is a load connected to it and this could be your um, a resistive load. So something like, let's say a light bulb, okay? So you have a light bulb over here and we'll indicate this with the resistance R and we'll talk about the idea of resistance later. Then when we complete this circuit, then a current can flow. Now keep in mind that until unless there is a path for the current to flow, Okay, you will not have a you will not have a current as such. You still have the potential difference, which means there is a potential to do the work. But unless you provide a path, it cannot move. So if you want to understand this better over here, you know you could have this object, right, and you could hold it in position. So you know you could 
you know, put like a plate underneath it. And as a result, it's not going to fall, right? But it still has the potential to go down if you remove that plate. Same thing over here in the circuit. Once you complete the circuit, then the current can flow in this direction and come back to the negative plate, right? And keep in mind that the direction of the current in the external circuit is from positive electrode to the negative electrode. But we know that the direction of the travel of the electron is, uh, is from negative electrode to the positive electrode in the opposite direction. So this is the direction of the current flow and this is the direction of the electron to come back, right? But we don't talk about the flow of the electrons. We just talk about the flow of the current, which can be thought of as a positively charged particle moving from positive plate to the negative plate in the external circuit. So what happens in this case is that there is a voltage difference that is being applied directly across this register. So this point over here, which is directly connected to the positive plate, is at a higher potential difference than the point B. So the voltage at point A is more than voltage at point B. If that was not the case, this current would not be actually flowing in this direction. Okay. Um, so VA minus VB is actually positive, right? And we will later on relate this voltage difference with the current flowing through the circuit and the resistance, all right? Now, if you want to look at the analogous hydraulic uh, circuit, then you have a pump, okay? So let's say that's the pump, and here is the reservoir, and you know, you have a pipe connected, right? And let's say the pipe comes down, and now here, over, over here, let's say you have a, a turbine, right, which needs to be rotated. So the, what, what will the pump do? Well, pump will take the water, it'll pump it up. So essentially what you would have is over here positive pressure and over here is of course negative pressure. You could call that negative pressure to be a zero pressure too. Um, and then this uh, higher pressure fluid will travel in this direction. It will rotate the turbine, right? And then when it comes back to the reservoir, the voltage will drop. So the voltage here is positive and voltage over, uh, sorry, not the voltage, but the pressure over here is positive and the pressure over here is negative and that pressure is dropping. So if we call this point A, call this point P, then pressure at A is more than pressure at B. We also know how to relate the change in potential energy with the work done on any system. So the basic definition of that is that the work done is defined as minus delta U, okay? And this definition is valid whether you're talking about potential due to gravity or due to spring forces or due to electrical forces. This definition is always valid. The only thing to remember in mind is that delta over here is always defined as final of something minus initial of something. So it will be final potential energy minus initial potential energy. So if you want to find out what is the work done uh, when you move this possibly charged particle from point A to point B, we can calculate that. So W is minus delta U and delta U would be U sub B minus U sub A because the particle is moving from point A to point B. That's the direction of the travel. Okay, so we have that. Uh, and then um, UB minus UA is actually a negative quantity because UB is less than U sub A, which means the work done over here would be actually a positive quantity. Okay, now there is a universal truth in engineering which says that if the work done is positive, that means that the system, which in this case is really your positively charged particle, is doing the work. And if the work done is negative, that means you are doing, an external agent is doing work on the system, which in this case would be the particle. So if you want to see how the work would be negative, all you have to do is, you know, look at this positively charged particle, okay? And let's say we try to now move it in this direction. So from point B to point A, okay? So if we do that, then what's the situation? Well, work done is still minus a final potential energy minus initial. So now final would be U sub A, initial would be U sub B because you're going from B to A and UA minus UB is positive and that means the work done would be negative, right? So in this case, of course, we had to do the work on the system to make the particle go in the unnatural direction because the positively charged particle wants to go to the negatively charged plate rather than toward the positively charged plate. In this video, we will discuss the concept of electric current. So electric current is defined as electric current, and we will use the symbol I to define it, as the rate at which a certain amount of charge passes through a particular cross-section in a given amount of time. So if you have a conducting wire, then at any cross-section, you look at what is the total charge passing through this cross-section over a given amount of time, and that will define the current for you. So for example, if there is a one coulomb of charge passing through an intersection over one second, then that gives rise to one coulomb per second current. And the unit that we will adopt for the current is ampere. So this is basically defined as 
one ampere or in short simply written as uppercase a so using our hydraulic analogy we can think of the flow of electrons as flow of water through a pipe okay so we have so we have water flowing over here through this pipe and we have electrons we have electrons here that are flowing through this conducting material okay now one thing to keep in mind is that the source of the flow of the current is already present in the conducting material one should not think of these electrons coming from the primary source of pushing the electrons which is the battery so the batteries are not providing the electrons for the electrons to flow through this conducting material the electrons are already present in a conducting material so you have these conducting materials like uh, silver copper and gold and iron which have the atoms and that we have the electrons that can be easily you know lost and when an electromotive force is applied by the battery on this conducting wire the electrons get lost and they begin to move so it's, this is not, it's not right to say that there is one electron that has started its journey over here and ended over here and that's how you know we are measuring the current uh, this is more like a disturbance at any cross section there are a large number of electrons there are a large number of electrons that are simply pushed in one of the directions so this is the positive side this is the negative side so which means that the voltage difference here let's say this is point b this is point b voltage difference between v a and v b is like this then the current can flow you know from from left to right and the electrons can pass through any cross section so individual electrons may take a lot of time to travel over the distances so for example one single individual electron may take as much as half an hour to an hour to travel over a distance of one meter but if you look at any one cross section there are a large number of electrons so we'll be like that cross section which are simply pushed across the cross section in a very small amount of time to giving rise to uh, the current for you so let's say for example we wanted to see you know how many electrons you would have at any, at any cross section for one ampere of charge you know we can find that we know that one ampere of the charge uh, one ampere of the current uh, can be written as one coulomb per one second so how would you get one coulomb of charge we know that charge on individual electrons is given as 1.6 into 10 power minus 10 coulombs that means that to get uh, one coulomb of total charge you would have to multiply it by 1 over 1.6 into 10 power you know 19 right so let's say this is 2 so we get 0.5 uh, into 10 power 19 number of uh, uh, electrons so that's close to 10 power you know 18 electrons that's a large number of electrons but they are available even in a small cross-sectional area uh, at any point too. The reason why electrons take such a long time to travel over the distance is because every time the electrons begin to move, they they actually face a lot of obstacles. So, you know, you have different atoms over here and they may collide against the atoms, they may collide against other electrons and as a result, you know, their path may look something like this. Okay, so they're trying to move forward, but while they're moving that way, you know, this is the gross motion, they are actually encountering a lot of obstacles. So they, they drift quite a bit and as a result, it's takes them a long time to move over a certain distance okay in fact in physics uh, this drifting is defined by a concept called drift velocity so of course the drift velocity is much lower than the speed at which the disturbance sets in which is which defines the flow of the current or the speed of the current and that's close to speed of the light